Hello and welcome to the Cisco SecureX and IBM integration demo. For Cisco SecureX, I am Ian Redden, the Manager of Ecosystems Development at Cisco. I'd like to talk to you today about Brian. Brian is a SOC analyst at a small financial services company in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Today's demonstration follows what it's like to use both Cisco SecureX and IBM Q Radar in a security operations center. Without further ado, let's get started. Brian starts his day with a quick meeting with the SOC manager. Every day he receives the same question, how secure are we? Unlike other analysts in Brian's industry, he's never been worried about this question as he's powered with both Cisco SecureX and IBM Q Radar. Brian's SecureX dashboard contains everything he needs to know to efficiently secure his organization. In addition to integrations with his Cisco products, the integration modules have been set up for all the products that Brian owns in his organization. Additionally, from available integration modules listing, Brian has considered other security products to add to his arsenal of tools. And he's really eyeing a Cisco umbrella subscription and virus total. Brian usually starts his day the same way by opening his Q Radar console. Very quickly, Brian notices something very strange. COVID19YouTube.com. Hmm. 55% of cyber squatted domains today are usually malicious or potentially fraudulent. As this domain resembles YouTube.com, Brian decides to investigate further. We're going to hover over the destination IP address. Cisco SecureX is built on Cisco's threat intelligence model. CTIM for short. Judgments are the intent or nature of an observable. For example, is it malicious, clean, suspicious, common, or simply unknown? Verdict is the top judgment. And citing is when an indicator has been seen. Indicator is evidence to support a judgment and what defines activity or presence of malware. In this case, with Cisco SecureX verdicts, we have Cisco AMP Global Intelligence, IBM X-Force Exchange, both telling us a disposition of something we need to look at. It's either malicious or suspicious. And Cisco Umbrella is giving us a disposition of unknown. So based on this information, Brian decides to investigate further. So to investigate further, it's even simpler. You simply right click on the destination IP that we were just looking at, hover over more options, and then investigate in Cisco SecureX Threat Response. Cisco SecureX and Cisco Threat Response is at its core an integration and aggregation platform for multiple security products in your organization. This allows you to query multiple monitoring systems with a single query and in a single pane of glass simultaneously. We can see Cisco Threat Response has finished doing a, the lookup of our suspected malicious IP. At the same time as we see it being assigned dispositions based on all the intelligence and data threat response puts at our disposal. Additionally, at the top of the screen, we see targets, what's being investigated, related items, the one indicator from IBM X-Force Exchange, as well as what enrichment modules were used. This purple computer icon tells us that one of our workstations has indeed seen this IP address. We can also see it has been potentially communicating with it. We should probably look into that further. And now that Brian is aware of this machine, he starts to dig a little deeper. He selects the target endpoint and investigates further in threat response. Next, we've changed our investigation details slightly and are looking at an enrichment for this particular desktop. Interestingly, we see these red icons. Red is not necessarily good. And in this case is a malicious SHA-256 hash is associated with this desktop that we are, are looking at. And we can see verdicts from IBM X-Force Exchange telling us that that hash value is malicious. 
as well as we see a lookup from VirusToll. Additionally, it's important to note that while our enrichment modules have created a verdict or a judgment on a node, by clicking on the down chevron, you're capable of creating your own judgments. So if you knew this file was malicious and it wasn't being listed as malicious or vice versa, you could come in here to the create judgment window and create a disposition for it and a reason. If I wanted to know more information on the malicious indicators uh, and, and their verdicts from IBM X-Force Exchange or Cisco AMP file reputation, virus total, etc., to pivot to their particular website for the particular enrichment module you're interested in, you can simply click on the down chevron and then I could pivot to IBM X-Force Exchange, which would take me to the that particular website or I can investigate further in ThreatGrid or Cisco Umbrella. But in this case, Brian has talked to his management and he's talked to the employee that uses that machine and they strongly suspect a Trojans installed. And management at this point has asked Brian to isolate that machine. So to do that, it's quite simple in Cisco SecureX with orchestration. And a workflow has been created called AMP Host Isolation with Tier 2 approval. So in this case, that's what Brian would select and that's what he would do. Cisco SecureX orchestration gives us the power of workflows. Once in orchestration, you will see all your workflows that are available. And if we click on a particular workflow, for example, AMP host isolation, which we, which Brian just used in our scenario, I can see all the activities and logic that is used to build this workflow. For example, we see uh, approval requests is created, sends an email, waits for approval, and then it isolates the machine. So if I were to click on send email, for example, I can see all the properties that are used, including the message that is sent when approval is requested. Setting up Curator to be able to communicate with Cisco SecureX is quite simple. Once you've installed the integration and extensions management, you should see an icon for Cisco SecureX threat response. If you open it up, you should see the extension settings requiring a client ID and client password. To generate the client ID and client password, go to Cisco SecureX, come to your administration page, open up API clients, and generate an API client. Plug in the client name, which I'm going to use QRadar. And then under scopes, you need enrich read, and inspect read. Once you've selected those two and plugged in a client name, you can click add new client. This information can be used now to copy to your client ID and client password. Click save and you should be good to go. That is all for this demo. Thank you very much for your time. I am Ian Redden. Take care.